Hey everyone, how's it going? In this video we are going to be focusing on the energy project. There's been a little bit of a buzz around the project lately so I thought that I'd take a look at it and tell you guys what I think. Have you looked into it yet? Are you confused by what it is, how you can use it or what it means for the crypto space as a whole? Well don't worry if you're new to crypto or you've been around for a while and just haven't had the time to look into this project I will be breaking it down as simply as I can for you. So grab yourself a beer, sit back and relax whilst I explain the energy project. So a few quick facts about the energy project. It started without running an ICO and it also didn't undergo a pre-mine. In fact, the team behind the project actually encouraged people to sign up to an airdrop air that would be issued in four rounds to get the project going. So the founder of the project is a guy named Tommy World Power. He's a cryptocurrency YouTuber uh, turned project founder. The code that powers the energy project is actually a fork from the Dash project. If you take a look at the white paper, you will find that they run on four core principles. These are trust, awareness, usability, and availability. The white paper also explains some of the programs and services that they will be offering to projects that make use of their blockchain. These include the EBI, which is the Energy Defense and Energy Bureau of Investigation, the EDP, which is the Energy Development Portal, and the EMT, which is the Energy Marketing Toolkit. Obviously, the Development Portal and the Marketing Toolkit are relatively self-explanatory, but if you read into the EBI uh, a little bit deeper, you will find that the EBI and the Energy Defense program is designed to work alongside law enforcement and cybersecurity firms in order to safeguard users from hackers and scammers. Now whilst I can sort of understand the train of thought that the team had for this, now obviously nobody wants to get hacked and nobody wants to get scammed, but building in a protection that allows us to, to trace where money is going and you know trying to identify the users behind it just doesn't sit well with me personally. Again, if you look at the white paper, the roadmap is actually quite condensed. There's not a lot on there. That said, we can expect Energy 3.0, which is the smart contract platform, to be released in quarter four of this year. Enabling the use of smart contracts will encourage lots and lots of dApps. As far as I'm aware, they are making it EMV compliant, which means that developers, if they choose to, could switch over from Ethereum to the energy blockchain. Now, if I've got that wrong, please let me know in the uh, comments below if any of the team are watching or anybody that knows that a little bit more about the project than I do. In quarter one of 2020, we can expect the team to launch the Venezuela adoption program. And in quarter two of 2020, we can expect the Energy X public beta testing. Energy X is the energy decentralized exchange that they are planning, uh, which will allow users to trade without fees. Around the same time, we can also expect to see the energy mobile wallet. Now for me, things like desktop wallets and mobile wallets should be very high up on the priority list as I would want to make it as easy as possible for users to store my cryptocurrency. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a look at the economics or the tokenomics behind this project. First thing that really stands out is that there is no supply limit. At current, the supply stands at just over 20 million and the team release a further 1 million energy tokens every single month. 1 million tokens every month is still quite a considerable number. The distribution of this is 40% goes to the treasury, that's 400,000 energy tokens to the treasury every single month. This allocation of funds to a treasury is actually the largest in the space and the spending of this fund is decided on by the DAO or the Decentralized Autonomous Organization. This is the owners of masternodes, they are able to vote on how the project spends its funds, whether on developing the network, on marketing, uh, on events, and everything else. A further 40% or 400,000 energy tokens is distributed between the masternode owners. With the cost of a masternode being approximately 10,000 NRG tokens or 60,000 US dollars, I've calculated the return on investment being approximately 66% per year. That's quite a large percent. Obviously, that percent would decrease as more masternodes are launched 
um, and held on the network but with a cost of approximately sixty thousand dollars it kind of excludes a lot of retail investors a further ten percent or a hundred thousand nrg tokens are distributed to the stakers now anybody with a wallet that they are running full-time can stake their tokens as it only requires a minimum of one NRG token. The return on investment for staking is 45% per annum and for me I consider this to still be quite a high number. And the final 10% or 100,000 NRG tokens is distributed to what they have coined as the backbone. This is a fund that is allocated to and controlled by the founder of the project, Tommy World Power. This means that the spending of this is strictly controlled by him and not by the decentralized autonomous organization or the masternode owners. So we'll have a look at the team. Now you can go to the website and have a look at the team. What you may notice is something that I noticed, which is the top row of the team members are the only ones that actually have a LinkedIn profile associated to them. The rest of the team, uh, you are unable to check their LinkedIn profiles and their past experiences. Um, which I found a little bit disappointing and a little bit concerning as I would like to be able to check out everybody involved in the project to see whether they have the relevant experiences. Now the people that I have been able to check, you can see that they do have relevant background histories, but I would have liked to have seen some high profile employees in there. Google, Amazon, eBay, PayPal, Microsoft, something with a little bit of a wow factor to really show that they are high profile and really experienced in the in their fields that said it's not essential but i just would have liked to have seen somebody at least with a background in cryptocurrencies and blockchain maybe coming over from a different project but it, there doesn't seem to be any of that going on in this team so yes they are experienced but are they superstars or high profile in the industries unfortunately not in my research i quite often check out places like uh, Bitcoin Talk or Reddit and GitHub just to check how projects are interacting with their community or in, you know how many commits and things like that are going on in the background. And something I came across was a post on Reddit that is asking about uh, missing tokens. The airdrop in four rounds that I mentioned earlier on in the video seems to not have been completely paid out yet and there are still a number of, of people still asking where their funds are and this kind of is a little bit of a red flag and as I mentioned github the commits of late have died off there doesn't seem to have been a lot of activity in the project and you would think with you know putting the groundwork in for smart contracts it would be quite busy and there just doesn't seem to be anything going on so what does all of this information mean well, the first thing I want to talk about is the the economics and the sort of return on investments that people are expecting to make. 60 plus percent for masternode owners is quite a considerable amount. That's 400,000 tokens being distributed to masternode owners every month that we can probably expect to see coming into the market. That coupled with the 100,000 tokens that the stakeholders receive we can probably expect a bit of a sell-off every single month which means that we are going to see negative price action unless of course there's a lot of hype around the project at the time and the buy pressure overpowers this new influx of tokens but we'd have to see that every month and i don't think that that's going to happen the backbone i mean seriously what the f is a backbone I know in the white paper they say you know it's only 10% and this you know this is relatively fair and yes okay 10% isn't a significant amount of 20 million but 10% of 2 billion several years down the line is a lot of NRG tokens for Tommy to have uh, especially when he's not being governed by the same rules that everybody else is and he can just flood the market if he decides at any point he wants to leave the project. Now, some of you may remember Charlie Lee leaving Litecoin and all of the drama that went on around that. Well, this project is nowhere near as established and I just think it could, you know, it could 
completely kill the the project. There doesn't seem so. And really, with this project, there just doesn't seem to be anything new, anything breakthrough, any improvements. It just seems to be a blockchain project that is imitating Ethereum um, using, you know, Bitcoin and, and, and Dash's code. And yeah, there's no real wow factor. There's no real superstar team. And I'm sorry, Tommy, but I can't imagine that you have that much experience actually technically within cryptocurrencies. You may have more technical experience than I do, but I still don't think that I just don't know where this project's going to go. And I, I would stay away from it personally. But if you are going to invest in this project, if you are going to involve yourself in NRG, please do your own due diligence and make sure you do your research um, because I would hate to see any of our community get burned by this in six to 12 months time. So I'm really interested to hear what you guys, the community think of this project. Do you think I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about or can you understand and identify the same flags that I've seen? If you're an NRG holder, please let me know your thoughts on the, on the project in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, then feel free to give us a thumbs down. If you'd like to see more videos from Bitcoin for Beginners, then why not subscribe? And if you would like to receive notifications, you can hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. But for now, that's it. And I've been Fez for Bitcoin for Beginners. Take care.